All right, uh, we're also now privileged to have uh, Karen McKim, who's done tremendous work in Wisconsin, a state, as Roger Stone has said, uh, where your governor's been involved, Scott Walker, in stealing five of them. Now, can we trust Stone? Is it really five or is it four? Five or four elections? Elections, he stole. Uh, but anyone follow that? Roger Stone, who worked for Trump, said that his Republican counterpart, your governor, you has been anything. involved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was involved in, in that machine. So the woman who would know. All right. So the woman who knows the secrets of Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And thank you to the organizers of this conference. This is tremendous so far. And again, uh, you probably noticed on your program, Jan and I switched places uh, in the order. The incomplete recount could go first. The complete recount on Wisconsin goes second. <laughs> so um, the Wisconsin recount. Um, First of all, it was complete. Um, 72 counties at least went through the motions of going through all their ballots and recounting them. Um, 50, only 50% 50 of the ballots were hand counted. The rest were run back through the machines. So the Wisconsin recount cannot claim uh, to have either ruled out fraud or electronic fraud or proven electronic fraud. It's still unknown as it is unknown in all the other states. But from the hand counted ballots that we did hand count and the um, other recount activities going through all the absentee ballots in all 72 counties, checking to make sure whether they were handled right or not, going through all the write-in votes in all 72 counties, um, we learned a lot. <clears throat> and to my, in my book, this shows how the media misreports election integrity. How many of you found, heard that the Wisconsin recount didn't find anything of interest, that it didn't change the results? Everything's fine. When you go through the results, ward by ward, candidate by candidate, compare the results that were certified before the recount with the results that were certified after the recount, and say how many votes difference is there. Statewide, a minimum, this is an absolute minimum, of 17,681 votes were changed. And anyone can go to the Wisconsin Election Commission website and verify that number just by doing the arithmetic. Researchers at MIT, Harvard, and UW-Wisconsin got together and did some other analysis. There's ways, the, the way the write-in votes were recounted and whatnot, that um, make it hard to get the maximum. 17,781 was the minimum. They applied their statistical magic to the counties that did do a better job of reporting, and they estimate that one in every 170 votes was miscounted originally. That's breathtaking. And the fact that that is not a national scandal, just uh, I don't know what to make of it. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, I do want to express one thing. In terms of what did we learn from the recount, I, I do want to say Jan was right when she said the Stein campaign didn't listen to the election integrity experts from Wisconsin in terms of how do you recruit observers, how do you train observers, and how do you get observers to write back in. But I want to add to that that I feel intense gratitude to the Stein campaign for following through on this. <clears throat> um, uh, I, I just, by my nature, I don't have a tribal bone in my body and I couldn't be a party loyalist if I, someone paid me. But so, and I have no love lost for other Republican or Democratic Party, but I do feel intense gratitude toward the Green Party for what they did in these recounts. There's all sorts of information we couldn't have. <clears throat> okay, um, a, a detailed report, or a semi-detailed report, was passed out, and I think it's going to be on the conference website when we're done. Uh, it's scattered around the room if you don't have one. I'm just going to touch on the high points, because I do want to try to save room for question and answer. Um, the, if you go to page three, you can see a table of um, 
what, is, what did I put on here, 17, 20, I don't know how many, of the miscounts that were documented, documented in the Wisconsin recount, uh, those 17,681 miscounted votes included wildly inconsistent and, um, I'm sorry, sloppy handling of the mailed in and absentee ballots. In Dane County alone, which is the county where Madison is, more than six dozen, no, more than five dozen, six dozen, more than six dozen absentee ballots were found in the recount just in their envelopes, never been processed, they'd been sent to the wrong precinct, something or other, um, just not counted at all. Every county had problems processing absentee ballots. Massive um, discrepancy in the grounds on which a vote might be disqualified based on envelope information. County deciding differently than municipality, municipality deciding differently than county. Hang on a second. Sweetheart, could you bring me my water? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the... Um, the <laughs> There was one full county and one, at least one municipality that I noticed that just simply failed to report any third party votes. When they reported their certified results to the state, they just reported Trump and Clinton and just left out all the other votes. Why they did that, I don't know. Uh, it's the kind of stuff that, again, just this carelessness. Um, typos. There was one typo in Oneida County that simply erased 440 votes. They were supposed to type in 484 votes for one of the candidates when they reported to the state. The finger slipped and they typed in 44 instead. Nobody caught it. The county certified it, the state accepted it. That was gonna go into the calculation for Wisconsin's electoral votes if it hadn't been for the recount. In Milwaukee, there was a precinct that simply left out 284 ballots for, votes for one candidate. Typos. Um, <clears throat> machine malfunctions. Some machines are sensitive to the color of ink that's used, and a lot of absentee ballots were filled in at home this time. The recount demonstrated, I'll, I'll tell you the worst, worst case. Uh, City of Marinette used a machine that was sensitive to carbon-based ink to count its absentee votes. On election night, they printed out the poll tape. It showed that 30.8% of the ballots were blank in the presidential race. 30.8% of the people went to the polls not to vote for president. The poll workers noted it on their election night inspector's report. Municipal Canvas discussed it and said, we don't know what to do about it. So they certified. They sent it to the county canvas. The county canvas looked at it and said, well, if the municipality didn't catch it, it's not our job to correct it. They certified. It was sent to the state, where the state Wisconsin Elections Commission just added in with the rest in terms of calculating Wisconsin's electoral votes. That would not have been caught but for the recount. 30.8% of the absentee voters in Marinette just disenfranchised, and no one was willing to step up and say, that's wrong, fix that. And it was obvious. There were obvious miscounts like that in municipalities and counties around the state, and our local election officials simply were not doing anything about it, even sometimes when they noticed. It, and again, this sounds like a radical statement, but our local election officials in Wisconsin demonstrated simple lack of care for accuracy. It's just they don't see it as their job. Um, so that's, that was my big realization. I'd spent the past four or five years working to get risk limiting audits in Wisconsin or getting, you know, and the clerks would always tell me, oh no, we don't see any machine errors, all we ever see is human errors. And silly me, I was assuming that when they saw the human errors that were fixing them. <laughs> but no, the recount opened my eyes to the fact that there is just an incredible amount of sloppiness that goes on with accuracy. Um, and so that's my big lesson from the Wisconsin recount. What are we going to do to wake local election officials up to their responsibility for accuracy? They are the only ones who are really in a position to prevent miscounts. They're the only ones who are really in a position to detect miscounts in time to correct them. And they're the only ones that are in a position to correct the miscounts once they're detected. What are we going to do to involve local election officials in our movement. They've got to join us. They're the key. 
Um, one of the things, and other speakers have touched on it, is um, getting citizens involved. That's the other thing. When I looked at all the miscounts and all the sloppiness that was, went into miscounting the Wisconsin presidential election, the vast majority of them would have been avoidable had there been a citizen observer in the room saying, wait, no, that's not right. You know, 30.8% of the votes blank. That's not right. Fix that. And I mean, I've been in that position myself, like in pre-election voting machine tests, when you say, oh, wait a second, you didn't check to make sure it was counting votes right. You checked to make sure it was counting ballots right. Maybe you should check through, oh yeah, we'll do that. Um, I'm not making this stuff up, sorry, I wish I was. Um, with, somehow we have to get, again, I'll echo that point that's been made before, we have to get more citizens involved in observing pre-election voting machine tests, observing poll closings, observing Canvas meetings. I, again, the crazy stuff I've seen in Canvas meetings where just one citizen present saying, time out, we want our votes counted right, would make all the difference in the world. I'm gonna stop there for questions and answers. And if anyone wants to ask me about the redistricting case or voter ID, I have comments on that, but I wanna stop for questions and answers right now. <clears throat> None? No. <laughs> well, he's coming to the mic. <laughs> Redistricting. The case that's before the Supreme Court last week is called Gill versus Whitford. And it's, I think, Knockwood, the good news in Wisconsin, in election integrity nationwide. Uh, the, just a quickie. The issue is um, political uh, gerrymandering, which has not been declared unconstitutional by our court. Racial and um, <clears throat> has been, but political gerrymandering hasn't. And uh, Justice Kennedy has been the key vote in previous cases. Justice Kennedy clearly telegraphed to all the civil rights and voting rights attorneys out there, what you need to do is come up with an objective test that can tell, uh, that so the court can say, crunch the numbers and say, this is a partisan gerrymander that's unconstitutional. Some civil rights lawyers and um, citizens in Wisconsin tackled that, change, he that challenge head on, came up with a mathematical formula to count wasted votes. You heard gerrymandering described earlier. You take all the Democrats and you pile them all into one district. And so then you get super majorities in that state. It's a mathematical test that does seem to meet Justice Kennedy's swing votes. Um, standard. He apparently was asking the right questions at last week's hearing. And cross your fingers, knock wood, say prayers if that's what you do. Make the Supreme Court declare partisan gerrymandering unconstitutional based on Gill versus Whitworth. Okay, um, <laughs> questions. Thanks, Karen, and, and, and thank you for bringing this from Wisconsin. Um, to everybody's attention. I, we got Wisconsin and Ohio represented there and in the epicenters of election <laughs> fraud in, in, you know, in America, you throw in a couple other states. But I guess, I guess one thing we've, we've always sort of gone back and forth on is a little bit you know, separating the fraud from the noise. And I'll just leave that out there because there is a lot of messiness to elections and there's gonna be a lot of error and there's a distinct directionality to the errors over the last 15 years, which indicate that it's not error, that it's fraud. But I'm, 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 I'm curious, particularly about what your take was on the selection by counties, it was al allowed by the judge uh, to the counties to select how they were going to recount those ballots. Do you see anything nefarious in the fact that some counties said, okay, we'll do these by hand, and others said no? I mean, it's a lot like the auditor going into the bank and the bank saying, okay, we, you know, we're no we know you're here for an audit. Why don't you take a look at these accounts and, and giving you half the accounts and you know, hiding the fraud <clears throat> and the others. Do you have any sense that there was a directive from on high or any other form of organization that allowed those counties to sort themselves out such that the fraud could have been hidden in the counties that were not hand counted? Um, thank you. Those are very good questions. Um, quick answer, no. I didn't see anything partisan or whatever that indicated that the counties that hand counted versus the counties that machine counted um, made that decision based on knowledge of fraud or not. Um, on the other hand, 
all the biggest counties, Milwaukee, Waukesha, Racine, Kenosha, La Crosse, Green Bay, all of them, um, machine, did the machine count. Now, if there was fraud, it would have happened in those counties. You're not going to have a, you know, a Russian hacker go into Forest County and mess with the, their 421 ballots. I, you're going to go to Milwaukee, and you're going to get one person in the Milwaukee County Clerk's Office to tamper with the machines and, and shove a couple of votes in Milwaukee one way, and you don't even have to make the county not go Democratic anymore, and you could still swing the state election. It's nonsense that the biggest counties, again, uh, Dane County was the exemption, they hand counted. But it's nonsense that they hand counted. Well, I do want to bring this up again, though. The Stein attorneys did challenge that in court, and it was Wisconsin state law that stopped them. Wisconsin state law was pretty clear that the county clerk and the county board of canvas get to choose whether they're going to hand count or machine count. And unless you can, again, you, we've all heard this before, unless someone can prove that there is fraud and prove that that fraud would change the outcome of the election, which is a catch-22, as we all know. So it didn't happen. But the judge's decision in that case, which is on the, uh, linked from the Wisconsin Election Integrity org website, was very good. The judge said, you have made your case that a machine count won't work, but I can't decide for you. But the other thing I want to stress to this room, and anyone in this room who might ever be involved in a challenge against hand or machine counted recounts again in the future. Wisconsin did prove that machine counted recounts do not work. There were several counties that machine counted the election, machine counted the recount, and then for one reason or another I won't go into right now, did a hand count of a precinct after the recount and found that both the original count and the recount were wrong. And so now there is documented evidence from Wisconsin, and anyone who ever takes this court again has to call me so I can send you to the right place. Documented evidence that machine counted recounts don't find errors that are there. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Karen, I want to first I want to thank you for your hospitality because so many of us came in from out of state. And, uh, and you really did make us feel at home, and it was a real pleasure and an honor to work with an activist of your caliber. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the question I want to bring up that I think that really has national concerns that came out of your report is on the Optech Eagles and how disastrous they are. And I want to point out to the public here and across the country that the Optech Eagle is married to the M100 E S N S. It's exactly the same machine. Right now in our country, 45% of the country is changing to the new digital scanners, but these old optical scanners are run by Mark Sense technology. You make a mark, it senses what you made a decision. It leaves no evidence behind. And, uh, and I just completed a study, and, and working based on yours, on your Optech Eagle, I realized, and it helped me figure out Maricopa County, because they, the new management does not want to use their old Eagles anymore, okay? They're going 100% vote by mail, oh. and, which I don't particularly care for, and they're using yeah. still an old scanner system, the M650, which is now the Optech 400, because they're the same machine. Because basically, all these companies have uh, STDs. That's sexually transmitted disease, you're probably thinking. It's software transmitted disease. And uh, so I kind of got you there. But anyway, I wondered if you have any extrapolations and, and so you can say more about these Optech Eagles because the M100 is probably one of the still biggest machines being used out there and it's the same machines. And when Maricopa County changed, they only changed the software from okay. the M100 to the Eagle. Okay, a quick Thank rundown you. of the facts behind this. Okay, most of the machine miscounts that were found in the Wisconsin recount were miscounts by the machine called the Optech Eagle. It is a, one an optical scanner that's sensitive to carbon and ink, and with the growth in absentee and at-home voting, a lot of people are marking with different kinds of pens. Now, I want to stress those are legally valid votes that our clerks are required to count by law whether or not the machine can read them. I mean, that is the fact we have to stick with. Uh, I, that was the problem I described to you, the 30.8%. Right now, we've got local election officials shrugging their shoulders and saying, oh, people must have mismarked their ballots and not carrying. That's got to stop. Uh, I want to maybe break some rules of an election integrity activist and say a few good words about the Wisconsin Election Commission right now. 
Um, after the recount, and again, after everything was all certified and all the dust had dead down and the local election officials had all shrugged and gone home, the Wisconsin Election Commission staff told the village of Hortonville in Allegheny County to send us your ballots. We're going to hand count them. We're going to figure out why the optic eagle miscounted. They went through them in the Election Commission offices in Madison. They did find out that ink color explained a lot of the miscount, but they also found out, and this is on the record, Wisconsin Elections Commission, that they couldn't figure out what was doing the rest of the miscounting. So they went ahead and just in late, aug late August, late September, uh, September, late September, decertified the Optech Eagle in Wisconsin. They voted to throw those machines out. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah, did, uh, did that answer your question? I've <laughs> Yeah, okay. Karen, I'm so glad that you talked about the uh, very disturbing patterns you saw in terms of undervoted ballots and blank ballots. Uh, Michigan had an historic high number of 75,000 undervoted ballots. And so when I went in as an observer, and I wish I'd had a chance to train all the observers to look for this, because the, the way they do the recount is they make physical piles. Stein, Trump, you know, so forth and so on. And then undervotes are in a pile, and uh, at, along with the overvotes and everything else. And so I was looking really closely for ballots where there was no vote for president but vote for dog catcher. None. They were simply blank ballots. And many of them were in absentee precincts. Who puts a, a two-ounce stamp to mail a blank ballot? Nobody I know. I think that's highly suspicious, and what I'd love to see is a joint project between our two states, if we could get the volunteers to go back and audit some sample precincts to see what was really going on with those two very highly sp suspicious patterns. And I, I hope we could get some recruits from this crowd to help us do it. Jan, thank you so much for bringing up that. So important. Undervote rate is very easy to calculate. You add up all the total votes for a president or whatever race. It has to be top on the ballot, I think. And you take them as a percentage of the total ballots cast. And again, you can just look at it. Does this make sense? Does it make sense that actually I, I, in the counties where I trusted the recount results, I did go back and figure it out for Wisconsin, and it was 0.77% of the ballots do seem genuinely to be blank. There were a bunch of people who went, wanted to vote for U.S. Senator but didn't have a preference for president, and I, frankly, I believe that in the 2016 election. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, those counties where that undervote rate was 4%, 5%, 6 7 up to 30.8, that's wrong. That's wrong on its face. And there's no excuse for a local election official who overlooks that and shrugs and says, I'm going to certify anyway. Uh, so yeah, we, the other thing is, when I wanted to write a paper for the Wisconsin Election Commission on this, I tried to look for research. What is the undervote rate? What should be the cutoff point? If we tell elections clerks, you know, if the undervote rate is over 0.5%, you know, be suspicious. If the undervote rate is over 2%, that's wrong. You got to investigate. You know, where's that cutoff? That's something that I'd love to have some national research done on so we can give the local election officials some real serious guidance, uh, not just how to calculate an undervote rate, but when to tell what, if that's a real red flag that something's gone wrong. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, my name's Jim Soper. Uh, a quick statement then in question. The statement has to do with recounts. Here in California, we did not have an automatic recount until two years ago. And Jen said, well, 2,000 is way too low for Michigan. The automatic recount trigger is at 0.0015%. Put four zeros in front of that. That's less than 1,000 votes in California. How could legislators vote for that with a straight face? Honestly. Uh, hey, they don't like to spend money in Sacramento, and they don't want to spend the money, and yada, yada, yada. That's the situation here, and that's part of the reason why we're having now to fight on AB 840. My question to you is more on recruiting people, and I understand that you had an unfair advantage and that you had a very divisive governor for <laughs> quite a few years. How do you get volunteers to work so hard on doing all the work that you're doing? 
I don't know. I wish I did. Um, again, when you have external events like Scott Walker being elected governor and just immediately starting to obviously undermine democracy. I mean, shutting the state capitol down so people couldn't see the debate on legislated, legislate, legislation. And I mean, he just mobilized so many people. And, and then the Stein recount, you know, when you have someone come to your state like that and say, no, seriously, we're gonna, and you know, people come out of the woodwork. But when you don't have an external event like that, I, tell me, I, I don't know I, how we get our city. Um, I ran for county clerk after four years of trying to get the Dane County clerk to pay attention to this issue and uh, getting absolutely nowhere and, and other than him telling the press that it's not possible that the voting machines could be miscounting. You know. um, I said, you know, I did what all the you know, elementary school textbooks told us to do. Well, then run for office yourself. So I did, and it, I didn't think I'd like being a candidate, but it actually was really fun being a candidate. And there's no other thing that gives you an excuse to just run around, like go down to the square for the music festival and just start talking politics to everyone you meet. Hi, I'm running for office. <laughs> and I, so I had all these conversations about election integrity with just people on the street. It is unanimous they want their elections audited. It, they... It, 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 there's so much concern out there and so much common sense. They know that it doesn't make sense for the city treasurer to pay attention to the accuracy of our computer calculated property tax bills, but have the county clerk not pay any attention at all. You know, and uh, there's, uh, there is an ocean out there of people who are concerned about this cause, but I don't know how to get them activated. No. All right. Oh. Big hand for Karen McCann. Thank you.